Hello friends, welcome back. I'm Michelle from Cup of Zest and I'm here to help you party more and stress less with some delicious recipes. And today what we're doing is we're going live and you're gonna hang out with me while I make some stuffing and cranberry sauce for my Thanksgiving dinner. Um, I am going up to my aunt's house tomorrow, Lake Arrowhead, there's gonna be about 10 of us and um, yeah, I just figured I would jump on live and do my cooking, listen to some music. I'll uh, drop the playlist that I'm listening to in the comments and we're just gonna go for it. So ask your questions. I'm here to answer any questions you have about cooking in general, Thanksgiving foods, whatever you want. And I'll be here for at least an hour and it should be fun. So I hope you enjoy this and um, ask away. Let's go for it. what we use in our house. We've always used it, the Mrs. Covenson's stuffing. We kind of follow the recipe, but do our own thing. So it's just what it is, right? Let me give you this uh, playlist I'm listening to. So you can vibe with me. by branding some sausage um this is just you know pork sausage it's breakfast sausage it's tasty um you know i don't know why we started adding all these yummy things to our stuffing on thanksgiving but we did and we're just gonna brown this Would be good if like you know the gas was on. What is this called for? Blah 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 blah. A cup, a cup, chicken broth. Not gonna put an egg in. This is actually my first time making our family Thanksgiving um, by myself. Normally my stepmom and I make it together, but we are doing Thanksgiving at my aunt's place this time. We did the same thing last year, um, but I was asked to do the stuffing this year. So doing it by myself, it's kind of sad, but you are here watching with me. Um, and it's just a little different, right? Things change as you get older, lives change, and. This is definitely a season of change, which bomb, to be honest. I kind of hate that season of change or what season of life are you in, but it is kind of real. Definitely things are changing. People are moving and uh, yeah, for our life.
usually I don't like putting things in bowls, right? Cause like, like when I'm cooking at home, not for the cooking videos, but I don't like to like have another bowl I put things in. But we're gonna do it today. There's so much chopping to be done and it'll make things a little bit easier. If you're hanging out and watching, I would love to hear where you're watching from and what your plans are for tomorrow, whether you're celebrating Thanksgiving or not, and if you're seeing any loved ones or just hanging out with your favorite people, which maybe your loved ones are your favorite people. I hope you like them. Uh, but you know, whatever whatever you're up to, tell me in the comments. Oh, please, let's chat. Let's see, let's see what's going on in everyone's life. Onions always make me cry, mother, mother, mother. I almost cussed, oh my God, I'm on live, but I'm not dropping that bomb. <laughs> oh my God, Michelle, not even five minutes in and I might even just start saying F words. Woo, Let's keep it together, baby. I did buy two packs of sausages at first I was like no we don't need that much but we do give us the meats So the box says to do a cup of an onion, cup of onion, and a cup of celery. So this is about two cups of onion. I am just kind of eyeballing it um, because I'm being lazy and I don't need to be perfect with this recipe. So we're gonna eyeball it and we're doubling the recipe because we like our stuffing and uh, it's delicious, so make extra for some leftovers. chop a celery kind of small um i think there are a couple people who like don't love the celery and the stuffing but you gotta have it right it adds a lot of flavor so i'm gonna cut it a little bit smaller than like a general chop Thank you. 
Hey friends, if you're just joining, I would love for you to jump in the comments, tell me what your Thanksgiving day plans are, and maybe answer the poll question that's in there. Got a little question, I wanna know what your favorite Thanksgiving dish is. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving and you probably all are frantically cooking or you're not celebrating Thanksgiving or doing anything special tomorrow. Maybe you're just chilling and hanging out and watching me stress cook over here. I'm not stressed really. Just, uh, you know, got a lot of cooking to do this evening and I wanna have it all done so I don't have to cook tomorrow while I'm enjoying the day with my family. It'll just be an easy heat up situation tomorrow. That's the goal. close to enough salary I think so we'll just finish up this little pieces already got going Onions and celery in the same bowl because they're going to be cooked at the same time, so we don't need a dirty multiple bowls. My husband Keith is probably very happy about that because he's the one who normally does dishes when I cook, and I normally use all the dishes. <laughs> Cups of sausage, way better than one. All right, I'll just keep browning up. And garlic, time for some garlic. herbs, right? Because they need to be cooked too. The only thing I don't have is like a giant bowl to mix this all in. At home, the house I grew up in, uh, we have this big like big plastic mixing bowl and it only is ever used on Thanksgiving. I don't have that. So it's going to be like a multiple bowl situation because that's, that's what I got. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I got. You also gotta stay hydrated when you're cooking.
I don't know how much garlic we normally put in. I'm probably gonna put in close to this whole head of garlic because we love garlic. We're gonna go for it. And we is in the family, not like I'm not using we as a royal, we as Michelle and Keith. It's just our family likes garlic. All right. These are some pretty big cloves, but that's a okay. Hey friends, thanks for jumping in and watching. If you haven't yet, tell me in the comments what your favorite Thanksgiving dish is and where you're watching from. I wanna say hi to you. While well, I chop all this garlic, could I use a food processor? Yes, do I wanna get it out? No. So I'm gonna hand chop it. It's also kind of zen to like just chop a bunch of garlic. I enjoy it. I was gonna say we almost had a cameo. Mr. Weiner getting some snacks. You're doing great, I love you. Ah, I love you too, babe. It's a little gross. We'll just get rid of that one. Do a little sausage check.
I do want to show you something. So we're going to get a little movement in this video. Okay. So, let's get the light too. This is the only time you're going to be able to brown and like get those yummy bits, crispy bits in the sausage and your stuffing. So while you could pull this and say it's cooked and ready to go, I'm not going to. I want more of this. It's just going to add some more depth of flavor into the dish, the final dish. So we're just going to go a little bit longer, move it around. And it will be a delicious. If you just joined us, I'm Michelle, making some stuffing for Thanksgiving, and also we're gonna make some cranberry sauce. And I'm just hanging out, listening to music, vibing. If you have any questions about cooking, recipes, Thanksgiving, I don't know, any life questions, let's, let's hear it, let's do it. I mean, really I'm a pro, pro-ish <laughs> at those cooking questions. That's where I'm gonna be able to help you the most, but you never know. pretty good. I'm for a pretty rough chop. I don't know if you can see that. Yes. Not super tiny. Not huge either. It's gonna get cooked so it won't be like too rough for anyone who doesn't like garlic. But again, our family loves garlic. Most of us. just joined in for cooking some Thanksgiving food. We got 
stuffing and cranberry sauce going on this evening. And I'm just listening to some music, hanging out with you, happily, happily, happy to answer any cooking questions you got. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and take a second to answer that cute little question I've got going on in the comments. What is your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Love to know. Our stuffing has a lot of herbs in it, our family stuffing, right? Secret family recipe, uh-huh. Um, but we do sage, rosemary, thyme, and I'm gonna add parsley in too this year, just for like a little bit more brightness. I'm gonna add actually a lot of parsley in, see if we like it. We also do a lot of garlic, um, onion, celery, the normal stuff there and a green apple, pine nuts, which is like a little bougie. Pine nuts are expensive as F, um, but we like them. And it's kind of just like a little special holiday treat to put those pine nuts into something. I'm just gonna make a little pile of herbs in the corner because I do not want another herb dirty bowl. That sausage is sounding like it's popping. I wish you could smell it, it smells so good. Oh yeah, nice and brown, hell yeah. All right, I'm gonna pull this now. I've got lots of brown bits going on here. Do I have a bowl to put this in? Maybe, let's see, yes I do. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like, cause that's important, let's see. Sorry for the wobble. All right, so look at lots of yummy brown bits. Not all brown, but you got some really good pieces. Also that's a little burnt, but you know what, it's fine. I'm just gonna pull it out, I'm gonna get it. Oh man, our stuffing is so good. I hope you guys get some yummy stuffing someday too. But yeah, I turned that off. I'm just gonna transfer it into a bowl. Because we need to cook more stuff in that pan. favorite kitchen tools a fish spatula I'm gonna have a little bit of the sausages fall in through the cracks but I want to keep a lot of the oil the, the fat from the sausage in the pan because we're gonna cook the onions and celery in that and some butter because it's Thanksgiving
sausage portion done. I'm gonna get some butter going. Let's see, we're doing two blocks of the stuffing mix and it calls for a stick of butter. So we'll do two sticks of butter. Now when I cook, and I highly recommend you do this too, use unsalted butter. Uh, when you use salted butter, it's not consistent with how much salt is in each package, or not necessarily each package, but like varies between brands. So some salt, some butter might be saltier than others. So it's best to stick to unsalted and then you can adjust the salt as you go. There's your little quick tip for the hour, maybe the half an hour, first half an hour in. Unsalted butter is your friend. this in the pan with whatever grease is left from the sausage and then we're gonna put the celery and the onion in there to sweat it's gonna cook them down cook them a little bit so they are not raw and we're actually not really going for a brown on those we're just gonna cook them a little bit all right more herbs more herbs Rosemary time. My family house growing up um, used to have tons of rosemary and there's still plenty on the side of the hill. Um, so it was really fun growing up to be able to just like pop outside and grab some fresh rosemary to cook with. I loved it. It was, it was really nice having those fresh herbs. My parents are supposed to be moving next year. So this is gonna be our last um, holiday season at home. And although we're not doing Thanksgiving there, we are going to do our Christmas there. And that should be really nice. Change again. Change, change, change. We're going to go pretty small with this rosemary. Rosemary, sage, let's get some thyme and parsley going. And I'm not gonna chop the uh, thyme, I'm just gonna pull it off its stems because I'm being a little lazy, but it's not going to make a huge difference in this finished dish. Oops, I hear our butter bubbling. Where are we at? All right, melty, melty, getting there. If you're just joining, we're making some stuffing. Going through the herbs right now, I've got sausage cooked, I've got onions and celery chops, and I'm just hanging out, listening to some music, vibing, here to answer any of your cooking questions, Thanksgiving questions, how about like life questions? I, you know, got some life experience, maybe I could help you out. No, this is not an advice show, this is a cooking show. But seriously, like, 
get, give me your food questions. Um, and I hope you're having a lovely evening day before Thanksgiving here in the U.S. and it's not too crazy for you. Alright, that butter is just about melted, so I'm going to throw our onions and our celery in. They're going to go in a little bath in a ton of butter. Where am I going to put this? It's going to go over here. It's going to go over here for a minute. So we're just gonna cook those onions and celery until the onions are like nice and translucent. They're just gonna cook for a little bit, nothing crazy. I'm not trying to get any color on them necessarily. And then um, we will add them to our stuffing mix with our sausage and the apple I'm gonna chop up in a minute. It's gonna be a delicious. Yeah, butter. Hey, Melissa, thanks for joining. Honestly, this probably isn't enough herb for our stuffing. Herbs. Uh, but I don't know if I feel like chopping more. We'll taste it as we go. See if I need to add more in. And I lied. I am going to go ahead and run my knife through at this time just once because I did get some... Uh, like not branchy pieces of um, the thyme in here, just a little, just a couple of pieces that are not super cute and might end up being, I don't know, little sticks that end up in people's mouths. No one wants that, ew. So I am gonna go ahead and run my knife through this once. The cool thing about cooking is oftentimes you can change your mind, like mid-process. Decided I was gonna go ahead and chop this time up when a minute ago I was like, nah, I'm too lazy. but. The result's gonna be better if they take the time to do it right. So I'll do it the right way. Yeah, don't over herb it. I'll try not to. I'd rather be under herb than over herbed. You can always get more herbs in there. Yeah, no one wants to chew on twigs. <laughs> these leaves off of the stem I'm just going to chop the stem up too because um, I don't want to take the leaves off of the stem so the stem is still delicious and, ed delicious and edible so uh, for this dish there is no reason for me not to use the stems but it needs a little wash little fine chop on this. It's probably gonna need more parsley than this, but we'll start with less and then add more as we go.
If you haven't answered my question yet, please tell me in the comments, what is your favorite Thanksgiving dish? To eat, to make, to share with someone you love. I wanna hear it. All right, that looks great. Now I need to find a giant bowl. Let's see where I can find that. Actually, what I am gonna do is um, I'm gonna use a big stock pot that I have. That's gonna be easier for me to like get in there versus trying to like use multiple bowls. So my pots are down here. I'm gonna hide for a second. I'll be right back. It might be a little loud too, cause like there's just pots and pans shoved in here. got some favorite turkey people love turkey and then we've got grandma's cornbread stuffing with gravy on top uh, yes please canned cranberry sauce is also delicious there's no shame in that you like what you like I'm not gonna judge you and turkey is hard to mess up okay so that is you know to be honest I can't I don't know what to say for your name but I'm gonna say your AFB that's gonna be your abbreviation right now AFB Turkey is hard to mess up. So I actually think that turkey is kind of easy to mess up. It's easy to overcook. Turkey is easy to overcook. So as long as you love the turkey you're eating, that's great. That's so great. Um, but I think a lot of people are intimidated by turkey because growing up, they've eaten it where it's been really dry because it is easy to overcook. One way to keep your turkey from overcooking is by spatchcocking it, which means taking out the backbone of the turkey and then pressing it so it lays flat. And your turkey's gonna cook a lot quicker and it's actually going to cook a little bit more evenly than if you put it in like the beautiful, uh, you know, way that we see in all the photos, which I know how those photos are made because I've worked on many of them, many photo shoots like that. So anyways, yeah, turkey's delicious, but dry turkey is not. All right, so we got herbs and garlic chopped up. AFB wow, what's the wow for? Is the wow like a good wow? Tell me, tell me. Okay, what else are we going to chop? I need to chop. I need to chop some apples. Let's get an apple going. Uh, yay, I'm so glad you learned a new tip, AFB. Yes, definitely look up spatchcocking. Um, I love to roast my chicken spatchcocked. It, again, it's going to be a lot even, a lot more even cook. Um, and it might be intimidating the first time you try it, but once you get the hang of it, it's so great. It's like such a great technique. Two Granny Smiths. These are funny little stickers on here. Do you need a little bit more space? I'm gonna get another bowl. Bowl it up, baby.
These onions are almost there. They're about halfway done. When they get a little closer, I'm going to add in the garlic so that cooks a little bit and then also add in um, the herbs as well, I think. Ah, oh, Keith Weiner, loving this. Thanks, babe. You're the best. Biggest supporters in the house. We got Melissa. We got AFB, new friend, new friend to me. Um, sorry if I do know who you are. I just don't recognize your username. And uh, Melissa, we got some fun people in this group today. Thanks for hanging out. So the apples are not going to get cooked in the um, butter with the celery and the onion, but they are going to go into the stuffing as a whole. So I am just going to add them to this bowl of sausage. There's no reason they can't be friends and hang out for a little bit before they get all mixed up together. But with the rest of the stuffing friends, they're going to be in my stomach tomorrow. And I'm actually going to chop this apple a little bit larger than um, some of the things that I've cut already like the celery and the onion because I do want like nice bites of apple in our stuffing. to me so it's easy to reach there's no reason I need to be like reaching real far for that Apple done. Let's see. Let's see how our onions are doing. Ooh, baby.
super close, almost done. When they are done, I will pop the camera over there so we can see what they look like together. All right, I'm gonna put some of this stuff away. I think I'm probably done with it. And we'll get to mixing some stuff together. I definitely bought more herbs than I needed because I didn't want to have to go out to the store tonight if I forgot something. So I definitely overpurchased, but that's okay because I'll use them in something else later this weekend. All right, it's our big mixing bowl for today. Ooh, I wanna show you something else. Here's another little kitchen tip if you don't use it already. So for the most part, my cutting board is, for the most part, staying where it's at. And that's because I have a damp paper towel underneath it that helps keep the board in place versus here where it's just very wobbly and I'm seriously pushing all the way down. I'm not joking with ya, I'm not joking. So yeah, the paper towel underneath, damp paper towel really helps keep your cutting board in place. So if you're not doing that yet, there's your second little tip of the hour. All right, let's follow these instructions on this world, world famous stuffing mix. Ah, AFB, yes, 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 it is such a great tip. I'm glad you learned another fun thing. It's gonna help a lot with your cooking and keeping that cutting board from flying around like crazy. Now, if I wanted to be like super fancy, I would have gotten like a beautiful loaf of bread and I would have cubed it myself and I would have like dried it out and done all the things. But in reality, like I don't have the time for that right now. And I cook every day for work. Um, so, taking another like hour because to do the whole process to cube the bread and let it dry out and then put it away properly would probably take I'd uh, probably take a half an hour not an hour let's be honest I just didn't want to do it so shortcuts like this they're totally fine right because honestly the most important thing about cooking for any holiday meal is spending quality time with the people you love and the people you're sharing your food with if they're gonna judge you because you're taking a shortcut to save yourself a little bit of time and stress that's not cool. Save yourself some time and remember your priorities. Another box. So AFB, what sort of place do you work at? That's your question. Okay, so I am growing Cup of Zest to be a full-time gig for myself, a full-time brand business. And my ultimate goal is to do YouTube videos live videos and publish content on my website, develop recipes for you, all you fun people out there. That's my goal. But what do I do right now to make the monies? I work as an assistant food stylist and a food stylist here in Los Angeles. And I've been doing this job for 10 years. So I cook for the camera. Jay, yay, woohoo, thanks for joining us. So glad you're here, buddy. Happy, happy birthday. So excited you're watching on your birthday, bud. Oh my God, love you, friend. All right, there are two boxes of stuffing mix. What goes in here? Chicken broth or water, blah, blah, blah. We got nonstick. We have two casserole dishes. We got baking pans. It's fine. Um, melted the butter, saute until translucent. Blah blah blah. Great. All right. So we're gonna leave this here. So I, I don't want to throw my instructions away. They're not that hard, but I do not want to throw them away. I'm gonna add in the apple and the sausage into my big old pot of stuffing breadcrumbs.
and yeah, let's pop the camera over here so you can see my celery and onions. Okay, so these onions are pretty translucent. Celery is quite not cute anymore. It's not bright green, but it's cooked the way it needs to be cooked. We're just going to go ahead and add in our garlic. This is so fun. Using one hand. I can do it though. I can do it. <laughs> All right, so garlic's in here. We're just gonna cook this a little bit. And I am actually going to throw the herbs in here too. But let the garlic cook for a few minutes so it's smells delicious. Once it smells delicious, we'll add in the herbs briefly and then, um, and then we'll mix everything together because that's just about where we're at. I haven't preheated the oven yet because it is hot in here. Um, we're in Los Angeles. It's, it's already quite toasty. It's already, it's still quite toasty because that's just the world right now. <laughs> and uh, I'll just start preheating the oven once I get the cranberry sauce going. Yeah, that's the plan. beautiful comments from you beautiful people all right jay your favorite thanksgiving side would have to be deviled eggs yes deviled eggs are delicious do they count as a side or an appetizer doesn't matter they're still delicious no matter when you eat them and what she what he really enjoys is a good stuffing like what i'm making you're the best jay i appreciate you love you for those of you who don't know jay and melissa are really great friends of keith and mine we just got back from london a fun london vacation with them we had such a great time. I love, love, love spending time with those beautiful people and I'm glad they're in my life. All right, enough gushing about the amazing people in my life. Let's go ahead and keep going with this stuffing. All right. I'm almost done. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, but I'm gonna sneak a little sausage bite or two. Just delicious. Oh yeah. Well that stuffing snack. Sausage snack. Alright, I'm just cooking in those herbs a little bit. And then everything's gonna go into our giant pot. It smells so good. Um, one thing the recipe doesn't say, but it is something that you should consider too when you are cooking, is to season all of your components. I'm gonna season this a little bit, especially because again, the butter that we used was sweet cream, unsalted butter. So I'm gonna put like, I don't know, it's about a half a teaspoon of salt into the onions and celery. When you salt every component like this, it really does help bring the flavors of everything out instead of just your final dish being salty. So consider that when you're cooking. That's what people in restaurants do really. Um, and you do have to be mindful though that you don't over salt. So it is like a fine balance of making you salt, excuse me, making sure you salt your components, but then not over salting everything because you don't want it to end up being a super salty dish. to go let's go ahead and get everything in here Ooh, okay so afb is asking do you use different types of salt for different components so i 
there's there are multiple types of salt i use diamond kosher crystal salt um i think we have the box down here this is a salt that i like to use um it's very like chefy and if you use just morton iodized table salt it's totally great also but this is just what i like to use um and this is what I use for like seasoning different things, right? So if I am say cooking a steak, I'll use this. If I'm cooking chicken, I'll use this. If I'm going to uh, do a salad dressing, I'll probably use this also. The other salt that I really like to use is flake salt. So this is uh, like, mal this is like, this is Maldon salt and it's nice big flakes. You know, I should just bring over the camera so you can see it a little bit closer. And uh, this is what you would call a finishing salt. So this is like, if you're ever in a restaurant and you take a bite of something and you kind of get like a nice crunchy salty bite, that's what your finishing salt is. Let me show you. Let's see. That should work. Okay, can you see that? That's your finishing salt. You got these nice big flakes right here. And that's gonna be like your crunchy component. So if you wanna be fancy, excuse me, you would use that salt to finish, like sprinkle right on top. And then this is the kind of salt that I use to um, cook with. I have like other finishing salts too, but I do like just to use the Maldon because it's easy to get. And honestly, I get it from lots of food styling jobs because we use it often. So yeah, you find what brand you like. There are a couple out there. There are actually quite a few out there and you don't have to get super fancy and spend a lot of money, but it is nice to have those little crunchy bits, especially when you're making a salad. If you're going to make like a yummy salad and season it with a little salt at the end, use some flake salt you will love it. And just a little bit, don't go crazy. All right, let's get back to our main shot. Sorry for the wobbliness. There we go, that looks good. Oh my God, we could, we could do like a whole salt taste test. That would be super fun. All right, big pot in action. Let's do it. Ooh, nice and hot and steamy. I just got like a little butter facial. Oh my God, get it. Yeah, you can go crazy with that salt if you want to. Do it. Oh my God, this smells so good. I really wish you could be here to smell this. Love it. All right, before I get too deep into mixing this, because I don't, I don't know if you can hear it, but like the um, bread cubes are getting a little crunchy and I don't want them to disintegrate. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in our chicken stock use chicken stock not broth this is going to be a lot more flavorful even you know if you're doing a recipe from a trusted source somewhere online that you like absolutely love to cook from and it calls for broth use broth if it just is like you know our box recipe use chicken stock it's gonna it's gonna have a lot more flavor in it and it's really going to uh you know enhance your dish it's gonna just make it it's just gonna make it better let's be honest it's just gonna make it better so we need to have three cups of broth or water. I'm not gonna eyeball this because I, well, I was, I was, <laughs> I was gonna measure it out. Um, there was one time and it's just like a little traumatic uh, Thanksgiving story is like, when I made stuffing one time with my family 
for Thanksgiving. I put too much chicken stock in it and it was way too moist. So I was gonna measure this out properly. Unfortunately, I have all of the <laughs> measuring cups in my car from a food styling job. So we're just going to make sure there's about a cup of this left in here by feeling it. Like, where is it in here? Ah, not quite yet. All right, that's, that's probably good. <laughs> also, I can't forget the pine nuts, which I need to toast these babies. These are not toasted. I really need to toast them in the oven, so I might as well just preheat the oven right now. Um, I always want to cheat and like toast my nuts on the stove top. But what ends up happening is they don't toast evenly and that's a bummer. So we're gonna preheat this oven to 350. I store my cast irons in here and I need to make sure that there were not any in there. And then we'll just do a little uh, quarter sheet pan to toast our pine nuts on. feeling better. I'm not hearing that crunch crunch anymore, which is good. I know some people put an egg in it, um, egg in it, put an egg in at their stuffing or their dressing, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't, we never have, and it's normally used like as a binder, uh, and the box says it makes the recipe a little bit more rich, which it does. It's adding more fat. But I'm not gonna do that, we've never done it. This is not a time to try new things. This is a time to stick what you, with you love. Stick with what you love and with what you know because I don't need anyone angry at me that I decided to go crazy with the stuffing. All right, make sure there's not too many herbs in this because that would be something I couldn't fix. That's great. Definitely herby and garlicky, but not too crazy. Yeah. Yum. So uh, Melissa says, Blue Apron always tells me to toast the nuts on the stove top. I've been lied to. So here's the thing. You can toast your nuts on the stovetop. They will be toasted more evenly if you do it in the oven. And I have no problem doing it on the stovetop other than I want my nuts to be evenly toasted. Don't you? So stuffing is just about ready to go into the oven. There's not much more I need to do with it. So I'm gonna tidy this up and we're gonna go ahead and get going on some cranberry sauce, which I also love. I'm gonna get a new cutting board because actually I'm just gonna flip this cutting board over and use this side because it does not have garlic or herbs on it. I'm gonna do a little wipe down also. And I'm a klutz, so I'm not gonna leave this right next to my elbow where I might drop it or knock it over. So it's gonna go live over here. Happy little camper stuffing. This bowl. I'm just gonna wash my knife. Okay. 
So this cranberry sauce recipe is one that changes slightly every year. We don't have a recipe for it, we kind of just make it. Um, my brother and I, Ryan and I make this together normally. But again, because I am cooking alone today and taking everything to my aunt's house instead of being together and cooking normally like we normally would, um, you know, I'm on my own. So hopefully it's good. I'm sure it will be. But again, it's just a little bit different than what I normally do and yeah. Let's do it. I need to grab a couple things out of the fridge. Embracing. This is a 12 ounce bag. Wash and rinse before using. Let's do that. Yep, 12 ounce bag. And I've got a colander down here again. Goodbye. Hello. You do want to like go through and if there are any nasty ones, like my finger smushed in that one. That's not cute. There's another nasty one. All right, I think that's it. Okay, a little rinse and into our pot they go. Oops, and I also use the recipe on the back of the package as a starting point, okay, just for ratios. So it's cranberries, this is three cups. I'm just using a bag, it seems pretty close and then a cup of sugar and a cup of water. Okay, cranberries right into our pan. And We are going to use orange juice, freshly squeezed orange juice instead or a, with the water because um, I'm probably not going to get a cup's worth out of these. We're also going to do orange zest as well, which is just delicious and like adds brightness to our dish, our finished dish. But you always want to make sure you zest your citrus before you juice it or else you're going to end up with a mess. I don't know if I'm gonna use all this orange zest, but I'd rather zest the entire orange now instead of like worry, instead of being sad later when I'm like, I wish I would have had it. Enough. Let's see. Let's see. Melissa says she loves the canned cranberry sauce, but this sounds delicious. There definitely is room in your belly for two cranberry sauces. All the cranberry sauce, please and thank you. We 
if you don't do this already, if you're gonna juice citrus, make sure you roll it. It helps like release some of the juices on the inside. And because I do not have a measuring cup, we're gonna use a glass cup. And I think I've got a citrus creamer. Yes, I do. Yeah, this is definitely not gonna be enough orange juice, but we're also gonna add in a little orange liqueur. And it's gonna be an orange sage cranberry sauce. It's also gonna be a smooth sauce. Um, I run, and you'll see this, um, the sauce through a food mill to get rid of like all of the uh, pith, orange pith that's ending up in here. And then also any of the cranberry, um, cranberry skin, skins from the cranberries. Yeah, I like a smooth sauce. Okay, so Jay has a cool question. He is wondering how I chose Cup of Zest as my channel name. To be completely honest, I don't remember. Um, I've had my website, cupofzest.com, for about, it'll be 10 years in 2014, so for nine years now. And I remember my ex-boyfriend and I sitting around just trying to figure out like what what I was going to name my website and it was at the time where I was um you know like the big blogs that I knew of were like Pinch of Yum and uh A Cozy Kitchen and Spoon Fork Bacon so they all were just kind of like food or had fun like fun cute titles so I opted to go with Cup of Zest because one I love citrus and um, cup is a measuring tool, right? So that's how it came about. Nothing crazy, nothing serious. Just a light, silly, fun name. And I didn't want my name, my name is Shell, to be part of the brand either. Um, I just wanted it to be more of a generic name in case I decided to pivot one day and, um, I don't know, sell the website, which is something I'm not planning on doing, or in the future having contributors and like other people join in and helping me with the recipe content. So I didn't necessarily want it to be just Michelle or um, say there's a couple websites whose names are like, um, like walks of life and they do like Chinese recipes, <laughs> like they do Chinese recipes and I didn't want my website to be tied to any specific cuisine or any type of uh, cooking method specifically. I just wanted to be pretty, pretty broad in case I wanted to pivot and do other things. So this is pretty close to the amount of liquid I need. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and top it off with a little bit of water. There's definitely some pith in here. So it's taking up a little bit of volume. I'm probably going to add about this much more and it's going to cook down too. So it's good. Thanks for asking about the name, Jay. I really appreciate it. All right, so with the sage that we're gonna add in, I'm just gonna do a rough chop because it does go through the food mill. I'm also not taking out really any of the stems. There are definitely some stems in there because the food mill is gonna get rid of it later. All right. Now the zest, I'm gonna go ahead and wait to add the zest in, I think. Or am I gonna add it in now? I don't know, it changes every year. Let's add the zest in now. Just go for it. Half the zest, I don't wanna go too crazy. Start with less. All right, I'm gonna go down here into my cabinets because that's where everything is. Find the sugar that I need. Hopefully I have it. If I don't, it'll be great. We'll find some kind of sugar to put in it. So I'll be back real quick. All 
right, found it. Lovely. I needed both white or brown sugar and regular sugar. Um, so the recipe calls for a cup of sugar. I think I've got measuring cups. Yes, a dry measuring cup. Yay. I have something I need. So I'm going to do half and half. About a half a cup of granulated white sugar. And about a half a cup of this golden brown sugar. I can always add more if I need to be a little bit sweeter, which that's pretty close. Anything else? I'm gonna add in, yeah, I'm gonna add in the contro now because I do want the alcohol to cook off. And I don't know, that was like maybe three tablespoons worth, maybe a quarter cup's worth. I eyeballed it. It's all good. And I'm just gonna cook this in medium heat, medium heat until the cranberries have all popped, have all burst, and um, we'll adjust the flavor from there and also maybe add more sage and then go through the food mill. So let me show you what it looks like now because it's so pretty. I mean, look at that, gorgeous. All right, this is gonna cook down and be delicious soon. but close enough for these pine nuts to go in. And I need to set a timer because if I don't, I will forget them and I will burn them. So many times have I burnt nuts in the oven, which I know, I know I was like, I like to cook my nuts in, my toast my nuts in the oven. And I still do because they cook more evenly, but I still have to set a timer so I don't burn them. We'll do five minutes. All right, I'm gonna do a little tidy up. I am still here. We don't have um, much for us to talk about other than cooking and Thanksgiving and all things food. So if you have any questions, please pop them into the comments and I'm gonna start tidying up because no one needs to be in the oven. No one needs to be in the oven. No one needs to be in the kitchen all night the day before Thanksgiving because I will be in the kitchen helping out tomorrow, I am sure. save this cutting board with with our citrus zest in case we need it later I'll just hang out here actually let me do this clean this clean this baby up oh jay you just asked a really interesting question <laughs> i didn't remember this okay well the question is for those of you watching What's the most unusual or unique dish you've ever prepared for Thanksgiving or otherwise? We'll do Thanksgiving. 
because I have cooked a lot of really weird stuff for work. Um, but for Thanksgiving one year, I did my culinary program. It was just a short six week program, like once, once a week kind of thing. And I was like, oh, I'm going to explore and experiment and try something new for Thanksgiving, which is why, <laughs> which is why earlier I said, maybe it's not the best idea to experiment when you're feeding a bunch of family for the first time, right? Like. I love experimenting in the kitchen, but for Thanksgiving, you should probably stick to the tried and true. I wanted to make grits, not grits. Was it, what was it? Was it grits? It was like, it was a, it was polenta. Same thing. Close enough. Um, so I was making polenta and it was supposed to have like a yummy, crumbled goat cheese on top and it was supposed to be like a really yummy creamy polenta thing with goat cheese and I don't know what I was thinking I was young and thought I knew everything because that's how I've always been um and uh we didn't have goat cheese or I couldn't find goat cheese at the store so I was like well blue cheese sounds like it would be great and it was disgusting now Jay I know you love blue cheese and I love blue cheese too but with the polenta and with whatever else was in that dish it was bad and I forgot about this until a couple years ago when my cousin Cassandra was just like hey do you remember that time when you did that and I was like oh I blocked that from my memory and everyone was trying to be really nice and supportive of me. And they're like, yeah, this is good. And I was like, this is disgusting. So yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was a rough, <laughs> that was a rough side dish I made. Yeah. Experimenting for Thanksgiving is always an adventure. My grandma Norma likes to experiment for Thanksgiving too. She used to, she doesn't, I don't think she really cooks really anymore for um, our holidays, but her whole thing was like always having a corn based dish. And every year it was always like, it was always a thing. Grandma Norma would try a brand new, like cut from Reader's Digest or like some silly magazine or whatever. And sorry, I called Reader's Digest silly. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> um, but she would cut out her little recipe clipping from her magazine or the newspaper. And it was always a corn dish and it never turned out right it never turned out right and poor grandma would always be so upset and then all of us were like no grandma it's delicious and it was always fine but it was never like what she envisioned so then it became a joke that like every year someone's got to do like this corn dish and have it be you know mm, okay mediocre <laughs> family traditions it's always fun Toasty nuts, almost there. Five more minutes. Yeah, no, it's not traumatic memory, Jay. You don't do not apologize for bringing it up. It was just really funny. It's funny to think about, and it's also like really great for me to remember. Like, it's okay to make mistakes in the kitchen. It's good for me to share. Like, it's okay to make mistakes in the kitchen. Um, I don't ever want to discourage anybody from trying new things, uh, in general, but maybe like, you know, Thanksgiving's not the time and place, but try new things, experiment, especially when you're on your own, figure out what you like. There have been so many fails just trying new things for me. And I do like telling those stories because it helps remind, it helps remind me of like where I started and where I'm at now and the fun things that I've learned. Okay, so Melissa asks, how old was I when I first started contributing to the Thanksgiving cooking? And also, are there any dishes you cook that were passed down from family? Um, I don't know how old I was. I probably was about 12. I started cooking when I was 12. And I probably jumped into the kitchen then with little things. I remember my dad teaching me to like make gravy, making roux for gravy. And... I always remembered helping with like, not the turkey, but specifically the stuffing. So it's always kind of been like 
my happy place is helping make the stuffing. And again, this is my first year making the stuffing all by myself. Um, I know it's gonna be good. It's just a little different, right? Change, change, change. And as far as family recipes go that we've passed down, there used to be a cranberry like jello molds that my grandma Jean would make. Nobody would eat it. We would make it every year, especially after she passed away. Um, it was something like, well, we gotta make grandma Jean's cranberry molds. It was, it was not for me. Let's put it that way. It wasn't for me. So <laughs> when, one year, um, I had worked on, a food styling job for this company, Pop Sugar. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're pretty big. And I worked on this gig and the chef that was on made a sage cranberry sauce. And I was like blown away with how delicious it was. It was different than any other cranberry sauce I had had because really any other cranberry sauce I had was that jello mold. And um, I told my parents, I was like, let's not do the jello mold anymore. It was hard to convince them. And then I started making this version of the cranberry sauce, the smooth sage orange cranberry sauce. And since then, that's the cranberry sauce we make every year. Hopefully this is one that gets passed down um, in the future to other people, but it's definitely the way to go. Um, yeah, and then uh, otherwise, my dad always smokes a turkey. It's something I insist he does. It's the best turkey. I love it so much. If you've never had a smoked turkey, ooh, get your hands on one. It will blow your minds. Um, so even though we're not doing Thanksgiving at my parents this year, or we didn't last year either, I still asked my dad, I was like, can you please smoke a turkey and bring it to Aunt Pam's house? And he is, so I'm very happy about that. I got stir this cranberry sauce. Let's see where it's at. Almost there. It's definitely bubbling a lot. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Got another question. Okay, so Keith says, as a past consumer of the Grandma Norma corn surprise year to year, they are more hit than miss. Yum to the Norma corn surprise. Ah, oh, Keith, you are so sweet. You definitely got the tail end of the Grandma Norma corn surprise dishes, and the last few years were pretty good, so you don't remember the years before you were around. <laughs> we definitely went like this, and you started around here, so you got lucky, man. You got lucky. <laughs> Almost there with a cranberry sauce. Um, Melissa says, oh my God, my mom had a cranberry bowl too. I used to not like it, but now she doesn't make it and I miss it. Nostalgia is a good spice, I guess. That's really sweet. Yeah, um, food nostalgia is, I don't know, it's such a huge part of life and like core memories. I miss my grandma Nor or my grandma Norma, my grandma uh my grandma Shirley's Thanksgiving food. My parents were divorced growing up my my entire life growing up. My parents have been divorced. So my brother and I would always have like Christmas with my dad, my stepmom and my stepmom's family, and then we would have Christmas like dinner with my mom and my grandma Shirley and that side of the family. And Grandma Shirley would always make this very dense, like olive stuffing. It was like in a loaf pan, super dense, had black olives in it, and you could just cut slices off of it. My memories of it are so fond, but I think that it's because of what it meant to me. I don't think it was actually that good of stuffing. Um, but I have really fun memories of like going to Grandma Shirley's house and like popping my head into the fridge and be like, ooh, yes, Grandma stuffing and like cutting off slices and nibbling it. Yeah, it's, it's fun to have those memories and to like have certain foods bring up those happy, joyful memories of people that you love that maybe aren't here anymore or, you know, the foods that they don't make anymore. 
Ah, God. Food and holidays and family. It's all uh, hitting me right here. I'm just gonna wipe away a tear or two. Oof. Let's check on these nuts. Yep, those are looking good. My timer did end and I didn't hear it. Ha ha ha. All right, these are looking good, nice and toasty. We'll keep this oven at, oh, it's at 275. My oven, this is, my oven still is, it's working, my oven's working. Not as good as I want it to work, but it's working. It's new. <laughs> All right. Pine nuts are gonna go into the stuffing. I'm gonna mix it around and then we're gonna go ahead and put it into our baking dishes. Also need to salt this. I haven't salted anything yet. I mean, sorry, I salted the onions and the celery earlier, but I haven't salted this as like a final dish. So let's do that. Gotta get a little bite in here. Just like a little bit of everything. A sausage. Or a sausage apple and some of the breading. That's actually good. I don't I don't think I'm gonna add any more salt to it. I think it's good with where it's at. Again, you don't wanna over salt things, right? So let's get our baking dishes going. Actually, I need to give these a quick little rinse. sauce is almost done cooking. So Melissa is asking everyone who's watching, so please chime in in the comments. What does everyone here drink with their Thanksgiving dinner? For me, the most iconic thing, Thanksgiving beverage is Martinelli sparkling cider. I loved being a child uh, at Thanksgiving when I could just like eat and drink sparkling cider and pretend like I was an adult drinking champagne. Um, I always enjoyed it. And it was just because, not because like as a child I wanted to drink, it was more of a, ooh, I'm fancy. I can like have something special on Thanksgiving too. So yeah, the Martinelli cider, top notch as a child, love it. Our family does do a lot of champagne now. And uh, so a lot of champagne and a lot of, uh, a lot of wine, honestly. I almost forgot to spray this pan with a uh, nonstick. That would have been bad. You could also butter your pan if you wanted. We're gonna do a little nonstick spray. Cause it's easy peasy. Ooh, so Jay enjoys sparkling cider still, cause yum, it is delicious. <laughs> I can do it. Don't judge, it's happening. I'm a professional. And as someone out there, at least maybe Keith was like, what is she doing? Hopefully that doesn't spill everywhere. All right. There's one pan, we got another pan's worth right there too. Oh my God, the 
this is so big. There we go. Let's see, how long is this supposed to cook? We are going to bake this tonight. I wasn't sure if I was going to, but I don't know what the oven space is going to be like at my aunt and uncle's house. So we're just going to cook it so all the flavors can kind of melt together. And then um, we'll just have it to warm it. We'll have to just warm it up tomorrow and it will be delicious. Almost done. More sneaky sneak sausage snakes. Yeah, yum. All right, that's just about at the right temp. The dancing has started because the cooking is going well. Smells like freaking Thanksgiving here. Ah, oh, Keith Weiner cameo? No. Nah, he's not gonna come on, he just hears the voice. Your boy's not camera ready. What was that, babe? Not camera ready. He's not camera ready. You're always camera ready. You're so handsome. Love you. Love you. It's really important to know your oven also. And the way you learn about your oven is by making mistakes in your oven. So um, I've learned that this new oven, because it's gas heated and um, the, the heating elements on the bottom, I have to rotate the pans about halfway through cooking or else that bottom pan in there is going to be burnt to a crisp on the bottom. Nobody wants that. And the top one will not be quite where it needs to be. So the recipe calls for 20 or for 40 minutes. We're going to do 20 minutes and then rotate the pan. Well, that's cooking. We are going to start our cranberry sauce situation. I will be right back. I have to go get a bowl because I didn't grab a proper bowl for it. One second. Oh look. I also made a little sign so you know. I'll be back right soon. Actually I'm going to use a restroom as well so we're going to give myself a little bit of a break and then we'll finish up with the cranberry sauce and then say good night to all of you lovely friends.
None of you stole any food, right? Ah. <laughs> All right, food mill time. This is our food mill. There are multiple discs. I'm gonna use the finest one. I think I usually like kick myself in the butt for going straight with the finest one every year, but we're gonna do it. And I always get confused. Yep, it says this side up. One time I was like insisted that the other side went up and I made Ryan, my little brother, who is 15 years younger than me, um, mess around with it and like do the food mill portion. And he was like, why isn't this working? And I realized my mistake. And I was like, oopsie doopsie, sorry, bud. <laughs> Let's do it on here first. All right, so I'm gonna put all the cranberry sauce in here and let's see if I can show you closer up. So it's all gonna go in here and then the food mill is going to, I think it's this way. Or it, goes, it goes one of these ways. Once I get in there and going, you'll see. And then um, all of the skins of the cranberries and any little bits will get stuck in the top and then it'll come out the bottom and it'll be nice and smooth. And this is a little wobbly, so let's put something. Do I have that towel still? No. I'm out of paper towel, so we'll do this. Just make a little base for our bowl so it doesn't slide around too much. It's better, better than nothing. Better than nothing. And now I finished the day with a cranberry sauce facial. It's a two step process. First you get your butter facial and then a cranberry facial. Call it a day. All right, there you go. Prefer to do it this way, that's better. Food mill it up, baby. <laughs> These are not services at Lush. Um, I'm sure in the future they'll probably do a holiday spa package service. Oh, it's a little bit of a workout. I'm tired. My arm's tired already. It's gonna be worth it though. Yes, definitely. Cup of Zest uh, spa treatments coming up, baby. You got to get all that goodness from the bottom of the food mill. Ooh, so smooth. All right. Now we eat this cold, um, we don't eat it hot. So the flavor is gonna be a little bit different once it sets up. If Keith comes on camera, can you get a cranberry facial? Sure, come on Keith, let's do it. This is really nice. I like the flavor a lot. Um, it's not too sweet, it's not too tart. I think I like nailed it with a brown sugar and a uh, white sugar combo. And I don't know if I want to put a little more cranberry or orange zest in it. Oh, here he comes. This is kind of oh, artificial. All right, on camera, baby. A cup of zest, uh, skincare treatment. Yeah. Give me. So just you know. No, no. You get it. Am I doing it or are you doing it? You're doing it. 
And I'm taking all the like, Oh wait, you're actually gonna put this on your face. Oh yeah, I was gonna. <laughs> Is that not part of it? Yeah, here, you can take the remnants. Oh good, yeah. Yep. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> this is gonna burn your face. Oh, good. A good fit. Yeah, good facials are hot. I. It's too I hot. Can't, it's too it's hot. hot for my it's face. too hot for his face. All right, guys. <laughs> Just for eating. Enjoy. Love you. Love you. <laughs> I don't want to burn his pretty skin. But you know, we did get a cute little cameo from the best husband in the world. All right. I think the sauce is really good. Um, I'm gonna save the orange zest that I have in case I decide tomorrow that it needs a little bit more orange flavor. Um, and that's it. I'm just gonna package this away. Thank you so much for joining me for the last, I don't know, how long were you here for? Hour, oh, almost two hours. We killed it, friends. Thanks for joining me. If you liked this live, and you want more of this where you just hang out in the kitchen with me while I cook, I would love to do that for you. It's super fun. Uh, leave a message in the comment, or leave a message, leave a comment in the section below and tell me um, what you like. Maybe we'll do a little breakfast cooking together. I don't know, we'll see. Thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family and um, or doing whatever the heck you're gonna do tomorrow. Sending you lots of love and I'll talk to you later. Mwah. Happy partying! Woo! Woo!